Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the 2003 LEGO Harry Potter Nocturne Alley, and I can officially say that this set is indeed vintage. It is set number 4720, and it comes with 209 pieces, retailing for $20 in the US and $25 Canadian. It is currently worth $73 used, or $106 new in the Canadian currency. Now, enough of the chit chat, let's get right on to the review. I think we're gonna just start off by taking a look at the minifigures. The first figure we have here is Lucius Malfoy. Lucius looks absolutely fantastic. I love the torso detailing there for his printed suit there. And the back, of course, has no printing. The face print looks all right. I mean, he doesn't have a alternate face print, which is pretty common for a set made way back when. And in his hand, he has a little potions bottle. Overall, I think this Lucius figure looks fantastic and is definitely one of my favorites simply because of the nostalgia and the really cool vintage look he has. Some people might not like the <laughs> yellow used for the hands and the face, but I think it suits him pretty well, especially for a vintage set. Next, we have the Harry Potter figure included in this set. Again, it is nice to have a figure of Harry Potter that doesn't have his Gryffindor torso on because that was pretty common even for 2003. And the torso here looks pretty nice. I love the sand blue used for the Harry figure and he doesn't have an alternate face print. I like it. Before we take a look at the set, the instructions look pretty neat, but I mean, I had some trouble. Let me just show you guys what I mean there. Um, on this page, for example, the black used here doesn't look like black. <laughs> I was confused while building the set. I was like, where are the dark gray pieces? Like, what am I looking for? Especially for this step here, I was like, oh my God, there has to be missing pieces. But then I realized, okay, that's the gray and that's the black, even though it looks absolutely faded and washed out. Anyway, let's get right on to the review of the build itself. The first part of the set here is the Flu Network Chimney Fireplace. It looks pretty cool. And I love the usage of, um, different shades of blue with the black, especially the sand blue used in this build here. And just to add more contrast, they've used a dark bluish gray, I guess old gray brick for the top part there. And as you can see, it can open up and you can take the figure. It has like a little playability feature. You push this back, you take the figure and... And yeah. That's pretty much the Blue Network fireplace feature here, and the back can open up slightly, but that just, you know, for the sake of it, I guess. Just to add a more angular look to this little build included in the set, and I think it's pretty neat. I love this feature right here. It's really fun to play with, and overall, it's pretty cool. And now, the main build of this set. As you can see here, we have a little Nocturne Alley part of the alley, I guess, like the entryway, and I love the usage of Again, the blues with the blacks and the grays. It adds a ton of contrast, which I'm a huge fan of. And I love that window piece. That window piece is fantastic. I can see myself using that in mocks in the future, but I think I want to keep it as is. Or maybe I can rebuild the set, given some pieces that I have in my collection to make it larger and more detailed. Let me know in the comments if you want me to give it a makeover. I can make that a series. Um, and from, oops, sorry. And from the inside here, we have a little, let me just give you guys a close up. From the inside here, we have a little printed cashier slope piece, which I love. Thankfully, it's not a sticker and a neon spider hanging out on the roof of Borgen and Burks. So the first unique printed piece we have here is the hand that grabbed Harry's when Harry was exploring and, you know, shopping around Borgen and Burks. I think I love this piece right here. I mean, I do love this piece, and I think it looks pretty fantastic. Again, it's not a sticker, it is printed on the piece, and it's pretty rare. The next rare piece we have here is the brain, the brain in a jar. I think that looks really cool, and is definitely one of my favorite pieces in this set. And we have a little uh, printed piece right here featuring a little bag. It looks pretty cool, and I think the printing is pretty unique. At a first glance, I was like, wait, is that a chicken drum? <laughs> And I like the interior design of the shop right here with the little shelf and the detailing from the inside. It's not too bad. I mean, it's kind of bare, but overall this set looks really, really cool. And one more thing before I end the video, one thing I don't really like about the set is the hinge feature that they have there. Hopefully the new version of Nocturne Alley will be like, will be built in like a dollhouse type of fashion because I feel like that's easier to display and easier to access in general. I mean, you probably clicked on this video because you thought I was 
going to be talking about the 2021 set, or I guess the future Nocturne Alley set. I sure hope it will come out. I have a strong feeling that it will, considering the Diagon Alley had like little Technic pins connected to the side of Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. I mean, what can fit there? What can fit there? Hmm, there's two options. Gringotts Bank and Nocturne Alley, like a full detailed Nocturne Alley. That'll feature a remake of Borgen and Burks, other than the one that we got in the super expensive 2011 Diagon Alley. So let me know in the comments down below what you think of this cute little Nocturne Alley set, and if you think it's worth the uh, $73, or I guess $133 uh, price tag that it goes for nowadays, brand new at least. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.